Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Cassie Brinkman claims her boyfriend made big bucks posting pictures of her on a fan site after she wanted to take a break. All right. Sean Woodson says his ex broke their agreement with her sock side hustle. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Brinkman versus Woodson. Ms. Brinkman, you are suing Mr. Woodson for $10,000. Yes. You say for fraud because he made money using your OnlyFans page. Is that correct? Yes. And the defendant, you say that you own the rights to the work. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. I'll start with you, Ms. Brinkman. Tell the court why you're here. So basically I'm suing my ex-boyfriend for fraud because for two months he was using my photos, all my likeness, making all, the, like, all this money and didn't give me any of the profit. And that wasn't our initial agreement. All right, so take me back. You guys were in a relationship. Yes. How many years? About two years. So two years you were in a relationship. Yeah. And how did this OnlyFans thing come up? Well, I wanted to be a spicy dancer at first, but the agreement was to not do that. So instead of like finding, you know, a spicy dancer, an exotic dancer. Oh, but yeah, but you so know, so you wanted to be an exotic dancer. Yes, but you know, to respect the relationship, we decided, eh, you know, let's just do this virtually so that I'm not with any customers in person, you know, and then I even invited him on board to even like, you know, help me with the account and everything so even he knows what's going on and it kind of builds some trust and some transparency between us and I okay. make money, he makes money, vice versa. So did you all decide together that you would do an OnlyFans page or you decided I'll do an OnlyFans and asked him if he'd be okay with it? We decided together. So all right, like, so I you remember him. that decision, Mr. Woodson? Yes, it was, uh, she texted me asking about the OnlyFans. Anybody um, have that text? I do. So when she texts you, your response was? It's, it's um, right there. It's I wasn't right. like sure about it, and I told her that we can speak more about it when, we got, when I got home. All right, so you just threw it out there. Like, well, what you think about OnlyFans? Yeah. Okay. All right, and you say, did you have time to think about me starting an OnlyFans? You say, yeah. I've been thinking about it, and I'm not sure if I'm down with the whole lifestyle. And then you said, well, we'd be in it together it'd be a great source of income. We'd be in this 50-50. You say, okay, tentative, yes, but let's chat when I get home. So the yes was tentative. At certain, tentative. Uh, so at some point, you all started the OnlyFans page. Yeah. Who set up the account? I did. You set it up? Yes. Under your name? Uh, it was, Use, I used her name, but as far as like uh, setting up the uh, bank account and all that stuff where the money goes to, uh, all the bio information, I did all of you that. You added all of that. Yes. You did the physical setting up, but it was the account was in her name because it was her only fans. Yes. But you did the work. Yes. Did the bank account that the funds deposited into, was that her account alone or was that a joint account between you and Ms. Brink? It was actually my own account, but um, I would send her her cut every month. It was in her name, but the bank account information was yours? Yes. Then you would send her her, did you go with the 50-50 yes. split? Yes, I actually have evidence of that. Let me see that. So you went with the 50-50 split and every month when y'all get paid, you'd send 50% to her? Yes, that's Okay. Correct. Oh, and y'all even did a little agreement on a piece of paper. We ag agreed a co-run, and you put the name of your account and split it 50-50. You signed it. These are your signatures. All right. And then here are your payments you made to her. One month was 2000 Consistently for five months, you were in your business. Yes. And on this OnlyFans, I'm scared to ask, but what were you doing on there? 
Selling my feetsies. Oh, pictures of your feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I, I've actually read that before. People are into feet. Yeah. If you have really nice feet, they can sell. So you would show your feet mm -hmm. and you guys were collecting money. Well, it seems like you all were making a lot of extra income. You didn't have to take your clothes off. You just had to take your shoes off. So how did this go wrong? Coming up. He didn't like it. Stopped it for a second. The agreement was that if I'm in, then he's in. But if I'm out, he's out. But he continued it, so. Now, I read the little paper. It doesn't say that. And later. So you drink the coffee, what happens? The coffee wasn't very good. Well, okay, so I start drinking the coffee and then she starts laughing. And she's like. Your Honor, I was not laughing. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-888. 552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Cassie Brinkman and her ex-boyfriend, Sean Woodson, over profits from a fan site. According to him, um, I had decided to sell my socks on the side on a separate account. Not only fans account, just like a separate Etsy, Shopify type shop, and um, using those same customers. That I helped build. That's how I sold my socks. And about two months in, when I was like finally getting some revenue, I had told him about it, and he didn't like it. So he broke up with me, when it wasn't his business in the first place, but he broke up with me, and then I had decided to kind of step away for a little bit, take a break from the OnlyFans, because if our relationship has issues, that means our business is gonna have issues. So I stepped away. Not necessarily, what? but if you're not mature enough to do both. Right, he didn't like it, stopped it for a second. The agreement was that if I'm in, then he's in, but if I'm out, he's out. Like, it's 50-50, but he continued it, so. Now, I read the little paper, it doesn't say that. Well, is not what a 50-50 agreement is, though? No, a 50-50 so split half. in profits. You specifically said only fans page and split the profits 50-50. If I agree to step away, that means he still steps away, too. Why? That wasn't in the agreement. It's not in the agreement, but that's not you. So you can't make money pretending to be me, whether it's photos that were taken beforehand or afterhand. It, don't well, make sense. Well, but my point is, what if you never posted another photo, but the account generated another $100 a month just from new people jumping on? Then we can, I feel like we can still split that profit, but he's pretending to be me though. He was selling like my socks that I left at his apartment after we broke up. I asked her to come pick it up. She never came back. She said I can throw it in the trash. So I saw a revenue stream. That's Wait pretending a to be me. So I want to understand this because I, I I actually, from the testimony, can understand what both of you all intended. Did you say, hey, just understanding, we're going to do a joint venture, and then if we want to do our own independent things outside of that, we're okay. Did you have that understanding? Did you say that expressly? Yes. Did she say that expressly, Mr. Woodson? No, she didn't. So what was your understanding? So when I found out she was selling her socks on the Etsy shop, I felt betrayed. The, the sock venture was a byproduct of the OnlyFans. So again, my work being used somewhere else and I'm not getting paid for. That's like my whole argument. Was she like putting the socks on on the OnlyFans and showing people take socks off, but then selling the socks on the Etsy page? In, in a, Were in there a, any socks on your OnlyFans page before you all broke up? No. And then you start, was there any pictures no, of socks? No, ju just feet. Did she ever say to you, hey, I really think I want to start an additional business? She brought it up briefly, um, but I, I just wasn't trying to. So once you found that out, you felt betrayed, what did you do? I just broke, I broke it off. I, I felt kind of bad and I didn't want to be with her anymore. You felt betrayed. You felt like you went out and made some money without me. I don't like that because you convinced me to do the OnlyFans page. I finally agreed. I set up everything for you. We're doing fine. We're doing 50-50. Now you want to go make extra money. And is it so much that she went to make the extra money or is it that she didn't tell you? It's more that she didn't tell me. Right. I told him, hey, I've been selling socks for about two months. But you did it for 60 days before you told him. Yes. I was still gonna tell him, I wasn't gonna not tell him that I was selling socks on the side. Okay, were you gonna tell him and were you gonna split any portion of those profits with him? I had no intention of splitting it. All right, so you had no intentions of splitting the profit. 
So I'm seeing how much money here. There is a graph that shows how much money was made on this OnlyFans. November and December, you all made $8,500 together, or was this the socks? November, December is what he decides to do without me. Oh, so for November, December on the OnlyFans page, you made $8,500. Yes, I, I logged her out of the the OnlyFans account. You changed the password and everything. Oh, you got real, real mad. Yeah. Are you posting pictures of other people's feet pretending to be her, or are you just posting more pictures that you've taken but she just is no longer, doesn't have access to the account. That's, yeah, that's correct. I'm just using all the pictures I've taken in the past and just basically so recycling. Like I've heard enough. Content. Uh, you all agreed to operate an OnlyFans together. You didn't agree how you were gonna get out of that if you all fell out. That's the problem. The thing is, Mr. Woodson, just because you get mad that she starts another venture where you decide she's betrayed you and hasn't included you, which I agree, it was a little bit shady. However, you can't change the passcode and collect the profits on something you all agreed to split 50-50. You did not agree to do the sock business. You did not advertise or offshoot this business on the OnlyFans page. It's something she started on, uh, on her own. And Ms. Brinkman, I hope that what you've made off of these socks, right, what you've gained is worth what you lost in a relationship. Because at the end of the day, if he decides he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you more, that's fine. But you cannot take the 50% of the profits that were made and keep them from her. So it has been determined by this court, judgment for the plaintiff for half of the $8,500 that was made on OnlyFans, that is $4,250. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $4,250. Put your coins together. Excuse me. Mm. All right. Not till I dismiss you. I hope you make some money with those socks. <laughs> Follow me out, please. Coming up. You had the coffee when you were in Bali. That's right. When you first drank the coffee, what did you feel like? I kind of was taken aback a little bit, but then I thought, well, we're in Bali, so I'm going to do as the Balinese do. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Cassandra Crawford claims the exotic coffee her friend brewed for their hike made her extremely sick. Tasha White says the delicacy is safe to drink, even though the beans are digested before roasting. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Crawford versus White. Ms. Crawford, you are suing Ms. White for $375 for getting sick from coffee you say the defendant made. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, the defendant, Ms. White, you say that the plaintiff didn't get sick from the coffee. That's correct. All right, I want to start with the plaintiff. How did this happen? Um, Miss White and I used to be co-workers, and then we became friends that hiked together and had coffee together. And so we've been doing this for a couple of years. She got this coffee on Bali, and I couldn't go to Bali, so she was trying to recreate the experience she had hiking. We got up really, really early, and we climbed this really steep mountain. And when we got to the top, you know, we, she was talking all about this food. She was bringing like lock lock and monkey bread and the, how the coffee was so good, but she never told me how the coffee was made. But I tried a little bit of everything because she brought it and it was a special occasion, you know? Um, what was the special occasion? The special occasion is that we were sort of recreating her trip and right. her spiritual hike. This was hike. an experience that it, she was recreating for you. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So you drink the coffee. What happens? The coffee wasn't very good. Well, okay, so I start drinking the coffee, and then she starts laughing. And she's like... Your Honor, I was not laughing, okay? I was actually reminiscing on, like, when I first experienced it, I saw it in her face how she was experiencing it. And... Kind and of, what is it about this coffee? Tell me about this coffee. Well, I'm not a coffee drinker, but what was the big thing about this coffee? So the name of this coffee is called Kopi Luwak, and the way it's produced is these civic cats in Bali eat the coffee beans, and then they poop them out. Coming up. Were you aware that she was allergic to cats? I was aware that she's allergic to cats but not coffee. That's kind of our M.O. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. 
We're back with the case of Cassandra Crawford, who brought her former friend, Tasha White, to court over distasteful coffee. If I can please give you this diagram. All righty, yes, I'd like it. to see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the cats eat the coffee, mm -hmm. then they... Poop it out, poop and it. through this fermentation process, the coffee is made. People pay hundreds of dollars for she this coffee. She thinks this is good coffee because it's expensive. The digestive enzymes inside the cat. So then the workers hand pick the coffee beans out of the poop and wash, yeah. dry, and roast them. That's right, Your Honor. And they have a smooth, distinctive flavor. People really ain't got enough to do. At all. Right. I, I, I don't even understand how, why, why we need why, why do we need the cat to eat the coffee and then poop it out and then pick it out and then clearly people need some more to do. But okay, and I believe you, you had the coffee when you were in Bali. That's right. When you first drank the coffee, what did you feel like? I kind of was taken aback a little bit, but then I thought, well, we're in Bali, so I'm going to do as the Balinese do. I wouldn't have traded it for the world. After you drank the coffee, Miss Crawford, what did you feel like immediately? I started throwing up. As soon as you drank it? I was starting to drink the coffee. Then she started laughing and told me. And I also started throwing up at the no, same time. And I got really upset with her because she knows that I have had a lot of issues before. I had She's to be hospitalized kind of with sensitive. stomach issues. Yep. And I am also allergic to cats. Thank After I started throwing yeah. up, I was afraid that I was going to have a terrible allergy situation this in my stomach. Over and so the I had top. to go to urgent care. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. So you paid $150 at emergency, mm -hmm. and then your pharmacy bill was $25 mm -hmm. for the drugs, and then $200 for your hiking shirt and your pants. Yes. Because I mean, what happened? I couldn't get the vomit yeah. smell out of it or the stain. Ms. White, were you aware that she was allergic to cats? I was aware that she's allergic to cats, but not coffee. That's kind of our MO. We hike and we drink coffee. Seeing as though you had the knowledge that Miss Crawford was allergic to cats, I do think it is very irresponsible of you to have her drink something that in some way came from cats. I don't think you meant any harm, but you mm. caused harm. It doesn't always have to be intentional. Mm. Judgment for the plaintiff for $375. I hope your friendship can withstand this. And I hope at some point you all will sit down as grown women and just work through this issue instead of having to come to court to resolve things that you could easily have resolved between the two of you. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $375. Who thinks that the food that their friend is serving comes out of a cat's behind? Who, who would ask that? And you know I've what? never eaten anything that came if out of a cat's behind. If I would have known it would come to this, I would have resolved it a long time ago. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.